You. Yeah, you. Over there. Are you an adventurer completely lost in this desolate world with no life? Do you struggle to make friends wherever you go? Do you like seeing those of lesser standing suffer beneath your wrath? Well, look no further because Megaton is just a place for you. Because where you thought the wasteland held all the answers to your burning lust for pointless non-existent vengeance, it turns out Megaton was your secret garden. But listen, in all seriousness, friends, are you telling me that for one of the biggest decisions you can make in an RPG game, you were going to be the good Samaritans and let these disgust- ah, I mean wonderful people breathe in this air? This toxic, repugnant air which fills everyone's lungs with nothing but dust and g dust. Oh, and some more dust. D dust. Help me. Somebody. But don't worry, it's about time we have a look at some different decisions in gaming. Today we are going to be looking at our first hardest decision of the Fallout universe. I think it's about time we try some other decisions out and what a better way to start than to destroy an entire city full of, well, life. What I like to do with these videos sometimes is argue from a point of view I may not agree with and sometimes I have to put myself in the shoes of evil itself. And today's evil, well it's just a little bit explosive. Today, my friends, we are going to be indulging in the power of the atom, and I'm going to tell you exactly why you are going to take Mr. Burke's hand atop the ten penny tower and push the red button that will change your fate. Of course, I am talking about the Fallout 3 quest, the power of the atom, and whilst Fallout 3 has a ton of problems and only rivals second to Fallout New Vegas, this one quest shows that Bethesda Game Studios can truly give you a choice. Now, now, you are all here of course, probably due to your reaction to the title. You might be here to just see what I have to say. You might be here to agree with me. You might be here to tell me why I'm a horrible person for doing this. Well, no matter who you are, grab your popcorn and relax because I'm going to give you a couple of distinctive reasons on why when you do this quest again, you should make the right choice and destroy Megaton for your benefit. Now of course, this isn't something you can just do at random, nuking a city is a lot more than just a random encounter. This isn't Skyrim, this is something you will stumble upon when you walk into Megaton for the first time. In the back of the city, in Colin Moriarty's bar, you will see a man waving his hand as a jester towards you, asking you to come over and sit with him, where he will then casually try and explain to you what needs to be done. He wants you to detonate the idol bomb sitting in the center of Megaton for his employer, Alistair Tenpenny, and will give you the equipment to do so. Of course, only if you have the necessary explosive skills required to do it. From here, the lone wanderer, that's you, has the choice of either taking this information and reporting it to the town sheriff, Lucas Sims, or following through with Mr. Burke's request and rigging the bomb up to detonate from afar. If you tell Lucas, both you and him can go up and take care of Mr. Burke together. You can disarm the bomb and everyone will praise you whilst also rewarding you with your own little suburban house on the foot of Megaton to live in. If you rig the bomb with the fusion pulse charge Mr. Berg gave to you, then you will have to travel across the capital wasteland all the way to Tenpenny Tower, climb to the very top and join Alistair and Mr. Burke for some tea. You will then press the shiny red button and boom, goodbye Megaton and hello free space for you to acknowledge as you realize what you have done and at that, what you have done is a great thing for the capital wasteland and its potential future under your <coughs> reign. This is the quest, but of course, with that little summary out of the way, I think it's time I give you the reasons. The reasons on why you, the Lone Wanderer, should destroy Megaton. So let's try something new with one of these videos. Let's try and look at it from both Alistair Tenpenny and Mr. Burke's views. Let's see what they see. Let's feel what they feel. Let's try and figure out the way they think to convince ourselves to do it. Let's try and become the evil video game characters who think destroying a city is something good to do. That something good will come out of it. That we can achieve something together as a group, as one entity and unity. 
So you leave the small but normal compound that is Vault 101, a place that had normal food, normal people and filtered water, something you would really forget to appreciate when you got out into the harsh capital wasteland. But all you see in front of you is dirt, dust and sand, maybe some ash but atop all these materials you see people struggling, some struggling more than others. You see people doing awful things to one another with no sense of morals, no compass to point them in the right direction and the ones that are capable of listening refuse to listen, instead choosing their own path of judgement and justice to follow by, no matter how sick and twisted it may be. Mr Burke and the Tenpenny residents are kind of like the citizens of Vault 101, they have a sense of the old world in them, and Megaton is home to bandits, wannabe slavers and nothing but junkies around every corner. Most of these people do nothing but prey on the weak within the walls, Colin Moriarty is a manipulative toad, Lucas Sims thinks himself some higher being, the children of Adam think a nuclear bomb warrants the creation of a religion. All these people take in the precious water, food and junk of the capital wasteland doing nothing but profiting off of the weak and helpless. Poor old Mickey receiving no help from a single soul within Megaton, all he wants is some water. Megaton gives me nothing but reasons as to why it shouldn't exist any longer and taint the leftovers of this apocalyptic world which you are trying to call home and the folks at Tenpenny Tower prove to have some sort of class. They understand that Megaton is nothing but a cesspool of wasted life and they see you for what you really are and that's someone of an intelligent class, hopefully about that you know, above five, and they want to help you help them help you. So by pushing that button, you are taking out the trash of, essentially, people who don't want to help themselves in this end of days kind of world, but instead want to take what little is left and, well my friend, why not do it? You know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. And when billions of people are wiped from a planet in a matter of moments and spread out so thin and far, does your morals even have a place anymore? Who is there to listen? The people of Megaton don't want to be helped, and well, if the capital wasteland had a lot more people like Alistair Tenpenny and Mr Burke and even you my friend, would wouldn't you prefer that world to the one Megaton is part of? So instead of me monologuing like a villain for 3 or 4 minutes, how about we get onto the in-game statistics on why you should blow up Megaton. And that obviously comes at the calling of your inner human greed for loot and XP. If you leave Megaton up, you will have a bunch of quests left on the side to do, a companion you can take along, and you will find quicker answers to your father's whereabouts, but that may not be the exact character you are playing. You may already know where your dad is and you may not have any interest in trash like Jericho following you around and well, you may get some shanty piece of metal for a home in Megaton, but in 10 Penny Tower, you get that and 10. If you have a good enough speech and you swindle Mr. Burke into rewarding you with more at the start of the quest, you can get a whopping 1000 caps for doing this, instead of a measly half for disarming it, that's a lot of caps. You will get 300 XP and minus 1000 to your karma instantly with just a push of a button. It makes for a perfect evil character without even having to try. But it doesn't just end there, my fellow evil friends. You will start to get regulators following you around and even former Megaton citizens who will try and hunt you down. This is due to your decision and the sheer amount of bad karma you have, but you know what this means, right? It means that anyone who is ballsy enough to try and attack you is ballsy enough to lose all that precious loot to the lone wanderer to sell for a decent profit at any local store. It's free loot randomly with no effort, but for the whopping final prize you can get the deed to the 10 penny tower suite, a high rise apartment with a king sized bed, a balcony and the ability to improve it to your heart's content. Isn't that just a deal and a half? The balcony view lets you see all across the wasteland and wow, isn't it just a <laughs> wonderful view with these wonderful 2008 graphics, oh boy, was really worth massacring the human race for, <laughs> wowee. This should be the simplest reason, but if you are playing the evil version of the Lone Wanderer then this is an obvious no brainer for you. You instantly get minus 1000 karma, that is literally the worst you can get. If you had zero karma, that is when you press the button, but maybe you are a simple bandit. You might not want to do this damage and do this much travesty to the people around you and to this I say, go away, nobody likes you, you Debbie Downer. But this is the easiest way to go evil at the start, to get Jericho as a 
follower, you need to have really bad karma. And once you push the button, you will have enough bad karma to recruit him in mega... Oh, oh wait, dab. But what else can I say about being evil in a video game? If you want to be evil, easy, blow up Megaton. If you want to be a little bitch, then don't blow it up. It's just a game, guys. But <laughs> Jesus. So the bottom line is, blow up Megaton if you want evil character, nice room, and you just don't like Megaton in general. Don't if you don't want to. I don't really mind, to be honest. It's your choice at the end of the day, my friends. But I hope none of you took me too seriously. I make these videos for fun, and this was just to see if I could argue from a point of view I don't necessarily agree on. So please don't use this as a way to assume my real world views. What did you guys think of my arguments? Did it make you want to blow up Megaton, or did it make Make you want to gouge your eyeballs out? Let me know in the comments below. I love seeing what choice I could make all of you choose to do. If not, I do really appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this decision and if you want to see more Fallout Harder's decisions, leave your suggestions in the comments below. I would love to know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider leaving a like. If you like me, if you like my content or whatever, and if you didn't enjoy the video, maybe consider leaving a dislike. If you don't like my channel or you want to be edgy, jump on that bandwagon of hate. Either way, ratings help me out and let me know what you guys think of my content. I really do hope you enjoyed this episode and I do really appreciate all forms of criticism and comments I get off you guys. Anyways, enough babbling. I do hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a great day. If not that, a great week and if not that, a wonderful month and if not that, a fantastic year and I will see you in the next one.